Okay, today I'm going to demonstrate how to calibrate a neutron detector on background neutrons. Uh, why would we want to calibrate on background neutrons? For one thing, uh, neutron detectors aren't, I mean neutron sources aren't that common. And uh, even if you do get, a, get your hands on a source, it's hard to know uh, how many thermal neutrons are coming out of that. Thermal neutron fluence at uh, Earth's surface is quite well known, so we can use that number to calibrate our thermal neutron detectors. Uh, so what we got here is a uh, CT007T, it's our thermal neutron detector, and uh, we're going to calibrate that on background neutrons. Uh, a rookie mistake might be just to take our account rate and compare that to the uh, the background neutron fluence rate and uh, get a number uh, like that, that's wrong. We actually have to make sure that what we're counting on the neutron detector is actually background neutrons and not some other noise. As you have seen, there we're not, we're not getting a whole lot of counts so we're going to connect our uh, CD007T to our Gamma Guard app which uh, allows us to uh, run a scalar let me see if I can get this a little bit in here yeah so there's a scalar we can run it so what we'll do is we'll set this uh, set the scaler to uh, 30 minutes and that way we're going to get better statistics what we'll do is we'll lay the detector flat and we'll do a 30 minute count and then we'll cover it in borax and what the borax does is it'll absorb all the thermal neutrons so if our detector actually detects thermal neutrons then uh, our counts inside borax should be much lower than what we're counting with the detector to spare. So our experimental setup for the borax is we've got a box here. Uh, we've got a box of borax on the bottom of the inside the box. We'll put another bag of borax on top of that. And we'll push our neutron detector right into the borax. Let me zoom out a bit. We'll put another bag of borax over top of it. And swoosh it all around so the sides are good and covered. And we'll put a box of borax on top of the whole thing. So we're pretty sure we're, we've closed off all the routes for neutrons to get to our neutron detector. So we've done our measurements and the first count with a bare neutron detector was 66 counts in 30 minutes. Then we covered it in borax and we got 14 counts in 30 minutes. So that tells us that uh, what we're counting is really neutrons because they would have been the ones that are uh, absorbed by the borax. And then we repeated it just to make sure that our results are reproducible. So on the next 30-minute uh, count with the, bare bor with the bare neutron detector, we got 67 counts in 30 minutes. And in borax, again, we got 12 counts in 30 minutes, uh, which gives us a total count, count in an hour of 133 counts bare and 26 counts inside of borax and uh, that gives us a net 107 neutron counts per hour. We also did a quick experiment. Uh, we count, we stuck the neutron detector into a 10-pound box of polyethylene pellets 
And what they will do is they will uh, slow down or moderate or thermalize uh, the fast background neutrons. So we expect that to increase our counts because we're counting th thermal neutrons. And sure enough, we got about, uh, we got 99 counts compared to 66 and 67 counts in uh, 30 minutes. So we saw about a 50% increase. Again, uh, that is another confirmation that we're actually counting neutrons and not something else. So to do the math, uh, thermal neutron fluence rate at a reference location, which I think is in New York, uh, is supposed to be about uh, four neutrons per square centimeter per hour. At uh, my latitude and altitude, the neutron flux is supposed to be 1.6 times the reference, or about 6.4 neutrons per square centimeter per hour. Um, there is an online calculator that gives you that. So I'll, I'll put the, uh, the reference for this number and the calculator into the video description below. So we had uh, 107 excess counts per hour, neutron counts per hour, and we're saying that is due to 6.4 neutrons per square centimeter per hour. Uh, the hours cancel out so we can replace that by seconds if we want to, which gives us 16.7 counts per second per NV, and NV is defined as one neutron per square centimeter per second. So that's actually uh, too high. It's, uh, it's more than would be theoretically possible for a detector of that size. So we must have done something wrong. And I think the issue is the way the neutron fluence is defined. It's defined as per unit area. So we're so that's assuming a planar detector. We've got a, a plane and we've got so and so many neutrons going through that plane. But we have a cylindrical detector. So not only do we see neutrons going through that plane, we also see neutrons that go through the perpendicular plane. Um, so at background, I assume the neutrons are going to be fairly isotropic. So we're going to see twice the neutron fluence that is given here. There would also be neutron fluence in the Z direction, but our detector is not very sensitive to that. So essentially because we have a, a, a cylindrical detector rather than the planar detector, uh, if we want to calculate the equivalent efficiency uh, to uh, just the directional neutron fluence, then uh, we have to divide by two. So this number here becomes around 8.4 CPS per NV. And that is pretty much spot on with uh, also how I calculated it theoretically, what kind of, what kind of efficiency we sh we're supposed to have for a detector of that size. So this is pretty much also the highest efficiency that I've ever seen recorded for a detector of this size and weight. The business end of the detector is just inside here, and the rest is our little display. Um, goes in the same, same display, same um, firmware as most of, our, most of the rest of our CT007 product line. So thanks for watching, and yeah, if you have a neutron detector and you want to follow along and uh, repeat the experiment, please uh, put your results in the, uh, below in the comments and uh, show your work. Don't just say, well, I got X, Y, and Z. Actually, show your calculation so that uh, 
people can check on it. And uh, we should check and see if uh, this method corresponds to what professional calibrations are showing. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this informative. Bye-bye.